All right, page 307 in your textbooks. You answer questions 18 through 21. It's a ghost. Uh, number 18. <laughs> Uh, so state the thin lens equation and identify each variable. And this was a little deja vu here. Audrey? Number 18. Um, the thin lens equation identifies each variable. Yeah, that seemed vaguely familiar, class. If you were doing your reading, mm. this again, I thought that was the mirror equation. Yeah, it's also the thin lens equation. Uh, number 19, I told you there's so many similarities between them. Number 19, uh, what signs are given to the quantities in the thin lens equation, Kendall? The signs that are given in the thin lens equation would be all positive. Well, uh, okay, so what they mean is there's three variables, right? There's F, D sub O, and D sub I. Mm -hmm. If the F is positive, what does it mean? If it's negative, what does it mean? If the D sub O is positive, what does it mean? If it's negative, what does it mean? Does that make sense? The, the signs within the thin lens equation. So uh, do you happen to remember from your reading what a positive or negative on the F would mean? Diverging. Right, positives converging, negatives diverging. Like, hey, I thought that was for the lens maker equation. Yes, yeah, still focal length, still same thing. So yes, positive converging, negative diverging. What about the D sub O? Can't remember from the reading. Think back to what we did with mirrors because it's the same thing. Mm -mm. Class, always positive. D is always positive. What about the DI? Do you remember that from the uh, mirror equation? Michael? Real or virtual. Real or virtual. Positive means real, negative means virtual. So exact same things that we had for the mirror equation. Uh, number 19, uh, excuse me, that was 19. Number 20, what type of lens corrects nearsightedness and what type of lens corrects farsightedness? This is actually from our lesson yesterday. Uh, let's go back to Kendall. A diverging lens corrects nearsightedness and a converging lens corrects farsightedness. Excellent. Number 21, define the power of a lens in diopters, Michael. The power of the lens in diopters is the inverse of the focal length. Good, or the reciprocal of the focal length is correct. Good. Questions on the homework? All right, we'll get into that here in just a second. Let's review, some, though, what we talked about yesterday. We talked about myopia and hyperopia. Which one's which, class? Myopia is nearsightedness. nearsightedness. Hyperopia is farsightedness. And um, we said that the major causes of these two uh, eye conditions are either the shape or curvature of the cornea or the shape or size, if you will, of the eyeball itself. The latter tends to be the more common reason. Okay, misshaping cornea can happen, but the uh, depth of the eyeball usually makes the bigger difference. The idea is that the lens of our eye is supposed to focus light, so it hits the back of the eye called the... Retina, good remembering from yesterday, okay? And um, we said the problem is, though, if the eyeball is too deep, the light focuses ahead of the retina, focuses too soon. If the eyeball is too shallow, the light would focus behind the retina, so it's not focused yet by the time it hits the retina. Both of those cause um, blurry vision, right? So which one is which? The eyeball too short, which one's that class? Hyperopia and the eyeball too deep is myopia. Okay, so there's the difference there. And because the eyeball is too deep for myopia, the light converges here instead of here. We have to slow the light down. It converges too quickly. How do we make the light not converge so quickly? Spread it out first. So it's on its it's divergent when it first hits the eye. And then the eye focuses and it hits at the back of the retina. So the diverging lens for myopia, which is the deep eyeball. Does that make sense? And then for hyperopia, the light is trying to converge back here. It doesn't converge quickly enough. So what type of lens helps it? Converging, converging lens starts focusing the rays a little bit. The lens of the eye does the rest, so it focuses here instead of just the lens on its own focusing behind the back of the eyeball. Does that make sense? Questions on what we talked about yesterday with that. All right, we ran out of time uh, when the bell rang on us as we began looking at the prescription, if you will, that you would get. We call it the power of the lens. And I don't know if we actually got to this in the notes or not. Power of a lens. 
Yay, nay. Okay. The power of a lens, every lens, not even just necessarily optical lenses, right? Eyeglass lenses, but any lens. The lenses we use for demonstration in class. A, um, for that matter, a, uh, a bottle of water, right? As, as used in um, uh, uh, you National, want, treasure. National Treasure, right? The bottle of water. That, okay, that could be considered a lens, right? It's transparent. Now, this one's got all these stupid ridges in it, but if it weren't, if it didn't have the ridges, okay, uh, it's got non-parallel surfaces, right? So it could be considered a lens. Any lens has a certain power to it. And the power of a lens is defined as the reciprocal of the focal length. The power of a lens is defined as the reciprocal of the focal length when the focal length is in meters. We don't normally measure the focal length in meters, though, do we? Generally, our focal length class is in what unit? Centimeters. We generally use centimeters for our focal length. So we would have to change it. For instance, the squatty little lens. Remember the squatty little lens? It had a focal length of, I believe, oh, I'm trying to remember. Oh, we did, we, we've measured it out where it would, I think it was 10 centimeters? Because we had it 20 centimeters away was when the image looked the same. So let's just say it had a focal length of 10 centimeters. Well, we would have to change that to meters, wouldn't we? What would that be in meters? Careful. 0.1 meters. Remember, we moved the decimal two places this way from uh, chocolate to uh, unexpectedly. And the King Henry died unexpectedly. Or we could say it's E negative two going to E zero. You know, move the decimal. You know, the E value goes up to, she up and left, go to the left too. Okay, there's a couple ways to remember it. All right, so 0.1 meters. But then the power of that lens, we take the reciprocal of 0.1, which is 10. And when we take this, this reciprocal of meters, when we're dealing with um, a lens, we'll call the reciprocal of the meter diopters. Diopters is the unit for power, and we'll just recognize, represent it with a capital D. So 10 diopters would be the power of that lens. Then we have the really skinny one. Remember that one? And I'm wanting to say we had to go to 30 centimeters to get the same size. So that would make the focal length 15 centimeters or 0.15 meters. Okay, if that's the case, 0.15 meters, what's the reciprocal of 0.15? 6.6, or we'll just say roughly 6.7 diopters. It was not as powerful a lens. It was a little thinner, made of the same substance, which made it weaker. The last one, I, I want to say it was like 35. It was just a little further away, the, the bigger lens that did a good job catching sun rays and burning leaves. Anyway, I'm wanting to say it was like 35, 70.175, or 17.5 17 17 centimeters, or 0.175 meters. What was its power? 5.7 diopters, okay? And notice that all of these converging lenses have positive power. Converging lenses have positive focal lengths. Converging lenses have positive power. Now, all of those lenses, admittedly, are more like magnifying glasses than anything else. They aren't the type of lenses you would typically use in reading glasses. Have you ever been to the pharmacy, Walmart, wherever you see the stack of reading glasses? If you look in the top corner, it'll say plus 0 0.10, plus 2.0, plus 3.0. These are the diopters of the different lenses. So this means the 3 is the reciprocal of the focal length, so one third of a meter, if you will. Um, excuse me, 3 would be the reciprocal of one third. Okay, so you've got about a one third meter focal length. You have about a half a meter focal length. You have a one meter focal length. And we're taking the reciprocals of those. But those are all converging lenses. Those are for people who, when things get up close, it starts to get a little blurry, so they wear the converging lenses. I wouldn't use any of those, though, because I'm nearsighted. So I don't use reading glasses with positive focal lengths. My prescription happens to have a negative focal length, and it's probably pretty bad. Um, <laughs> So anyway, I'm wanting to, the focal length's a little harder to track on the diverging lens because the light spreads out. It doesn't actually converge. Um, but if you happen to have a focal length of about, I think I'm probably somewhere in this neighborhood, the focal length is, let's just say, negative um, 21 centimeters. Let's just pretend that's my focal length. 
negative 21 centimeters. If we wanted to find the power of my lens, we would first change it to, which would be negative 0.21 meters. Then we'll take the reciprocal of negative 0.21, which is negative 4.8-ish. Okay, diopters. That's somewhere around my prescription. That's for pretty bad eyes. It's not like the worst eyes in the world, but it's pretty bad. It's up there. It's uh, you better not take your glasses off while you're driving kind of bad. <laughs> okay. Um, questions on this. So diopters is just the power of a lens, the reciprocal of the focal length when the focal length is in meters. And that's the key. Got to remember to change to meters first. All right. Questions on lenses, especially in rel relation to uh, correcting uh, the eyes specifically. By the way, you could also use power of a lens when we talk about um, um, microscopes and telescopes and things that use binoculars, things that use lenses as well, that magnify an image in a sense as well. Right? There's a certain power to those lenses also. We'll look a little bit at that here in a little bit. Well, actually, it might be tomorrow. We'll see. All right, next thing in your notes. Let's flip back in your books to page 305. Let's talk about the thin lens equation. And it begs the question. What does it mean by thin? It's such a relative term. Like if I went to the hot dog eating contest, they would say I was thin. But if I went to a cross country race at this stage of my life, they would not think me so thin. Okay, I've put on about uh, 50 pounds since my high school cross country days and I haven't grown an inch vertically, okay? <laughs> it's just been 50 extra pounds everywhere else. So anyway, um, thin is such a relative term. Okay, so we talk about the thin lens equation. Thin is comparing the width or thickness of the lens to the radii of curvature. Thin compares the thickness of the lens to the radii of curvature. Thin compares the thickness to the radii of curvature. Now, do you remember the short, squatty little lens that we had? Okay, kind of zooming in on it, but it was, it was about, I feel like it was like this squatty at least, maybe more squatty relative. Okay, so if you were to actually track the radius of curvature, the radii of curvature would be about this much. The thickness of the lens is about a third of that. That's not super thin. So this particular equation wouldn't work particularly well for that squatty lens. It doesn't apply super well. But then we have that other lens that was, I mean, it was, it was, it was really thin, right? Well, if you completed this circle around, its radius might be that long, uh, okay? Well, the thickness, I mean, you could fit, what, 10 or 12 of those in there. That's pretty thin. Okay, compared to the radii of curvature, it's pretty thin. We're going to assume that the lenses we deal with are thin relative to the radii of curvature. That way the thickness doesn't mess up uh, the, the math, if you will. Okay, too thick could mess with the math. But assuming the lens is thin by that definition, the reciprocal of the focal length equals the reciprocal of the object's distance from the lens plus the reciprocal of the image's distance from the lens. And as was mentioned as we went over the homework, Hey, that's the same thing as the mirror equation, right? Which means we're going to move very quickly through this, okay? Uh, we're not going to spend nearly as much time with the lenses oh, I broke the chalk, as we did with the mirrors, just because we've already done this before. We do need to understand, though, that the focal length indicates a different thing for lenses than it does for mirrors. Remember, for mirrors, positive meant concave, negative meant convex. Well, remember, analogous to that, we said the converging lens did the same things as the concave mirror. So if positive before meant concave, positive now means converging. And where negative before meant convex, it now means diverging. Also, that's the exact same sign convention we used for the lens maker equation. So that should make it easy to remember. Object distance, like the uh, mirrors, always positive. We assume the placement of the object is where we want the object to be. If we wanted it to be somewhere else, we would have moved it. We put it where we wanted it. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, and then the D sub I. That's where the image forms. Now remember, for a mirror, an image should strike a mirror and should reflect off. If it does, if an image forms on the same side of a mirror as an object, that's positive. That's real. 
If the image seems to be behind the mirror, that's virtual. A lens is different. What should light do with a lens? Go through it. If the light goes through the lens and forms an image on the opposite side, that's real and that's positive. Positive still means real, but by real we mean it forms on the opposite side of the lens. Does that make sense? For a mirror, real images form on the same side. For lenses, they form on the opposite side, but we're still going to use positive to indicate a real image. Negative then will continue to mean a virtual image. But again, now virtual images appear to stay on the same side. All of you are on the same side of my lenses as you really are. Objects, you folks, images, what I see of you, on the same side of the lens, virtual images. Okay. Again, that's actually the same rules we had before for DCMI, positive, real, negative, virtual. We just interpret it slightly differently. Questions on the thin lens equation. Along the same notes, we could compare object height to image height, or rather image height to object height. We call this lateral magnification. Lateral magnification is the ratio of image height to object height. Or we could say it's the ratio of negative image distance to object distance. You're like, hey, we had that before too. Yep, same equation. And it still means the same thing. A positive magnification, and therefore also a positive image height, indicates an upright image. A negative indicates an inverted image. So magnification or image height, either one of them, positive, upright, negative, inverted, the H sub O continues to be always positive. And as before, the absolute value of lateral magnification. If it's greater than 1, we have an enlarged image. If the absolute value is less than 1, we have a reduced image. And if it's equal to 1, we have an unmagnified image. One that is neither enlarged nor reduced. All of this the same stuff we did with mirrors. So it should be very easy to remember. It should be very easy to work through some problems together here in a moment. Are there any questions on this, though? You probably kind of should have figured as you looked at those ray diagrams, like, hey, it's the same exact cases, that the math would be the exact same. We'll look at page 305, not to insult your intelligence or anything. Look at page 305, example 20.7, and read that first example problem for us, if you would, please, Michael. A converging lens has a focal length of 1 centimeter. A candle is placed at an object distance of 20 centimeters. What is the image distance? Find lens magnification and describe the image. All right. So first of all, um, we would write down what they gave us, just like we did before. We were given, Michael, the... Given the D sub O. Given the D sub O to be... Uh, 20 centimeters. And we'll assume that to be positive. They also told us the focal length, focal length was 10 centimeters. Now, one thing we do not have to do like we did with mirrors. Remember, often with the mirrors, they say, here's the radius of curvature. And then we'd have to get the focal length. It's not that easy. They can't just give us the radius of curvature. They'd have to give us both and the index of refraction. We'd have to use the lens maker equation, all of that nonsense to get the focal length. So with the lenses, it's almost easier because they'll generally just give it to you on a silver platter, so to speak. Um, and the question is, what's the image distance? What's the D sub I? Well, like before, we'll move the D sub O over class as a mm -hmm. negative 1 over D sub O, and we'll use reciprocal. So on your calculator, we'll take the reciprocal of the focal length minus the reciprocal of the DO, and we'll take the reciprocal one more time. And what do we get for the image distance? 20. 20, and it's two sig figs, right? 20 point, no, oh, three sig figs. 20.0 centimeters is our image's distance. In other words, if you put an object, if the focal length's 10, and you put the object 20 centimeters away, the image will form 20 centimeters on the other side. By the way, that's double the focal length away, so the image should be the exact same size on the other side, just inverted. Remember, we saw that. Um, and it says to describe the, oh, find the lens's magnification. Well, again, there's two ways to find magnification. We don't know HI and HO, but we do know DI and DO. Take negative 20 over 20 class, we get, remember, three sig figs, but no units on magnification. And it says to describe the image. Well, if the DI is positive class, oh, real. real. 
If the magnification is negative class, and those two always go together anyway, and then uh, if the uh, if magnification's absolute value equals one, it's unmagnified. Unmag. <laughs> All right, questions on the example problem. See how it's just like what we were doing before. Look at the next example, example 20.8, and read that for us if you would, Audrey. The lens has a lateral magnification of 0.50 for an object of 0.80 centimeters high at a distance of 10.7 meters. What is the image distance? Is the image real? Is the image upright? What is the focal length? Is the lens converging or diverging? What is the height of the image? All right, so let's write down what they give us first. There's a lot of questions they ask. But Audrey, first they give us? Um, the magnification is 0.50. All right. And then um, the height of the object is 0.80 centimeters. Um, and then the distance of the object is 0.70. All right, excellent. Make a list of what you know. The first thing they ask for is the image distance. What would I have to use to find image distance for this problem class? The magnification equation. I can't use the thin lens equation because I don't know f or d sub i. You can't solve it with the two unknowns. But the magnification equation, the second part, class m equals negative di over di, that second part, that I could use. So in for the magnification, we could plug in 0 0.50. In for the d sub i, uh, just leave d sub i. In for the d sub o, we can plug in 10. And it would help if I put the magnification class over 1. Now we can cross multiply. In fact, I would include the negative with the denominator here. And class, what do we get for the d sub i? Negative 5.0 centimeters. Make sense? Uh, that was part A. Part B asked, Audrey? Um, is the image real? Is the image real? If the d sub i is negative class, virtual. no, it's virtual. All right, part C, Audrey asks. Is the image upright? How would I tell if the image is upright, class? The height of the image, but I don't know the height of the image, or the magnification would share the same sign, S-I-G-N, as the image height. So since magnification is positive, it is upright. Now the other way you could know it is remember that all virtual images are upright. So if it's virtual, yes, of course it's upright. Uh, letter D, Audrey. What is the focal length? How am I going to go about finding the focal length class? Yeah, the, the thin lens equation, 1 over f equals 1 over d sub o plus 1 over d sub i. And we actually get to solve it as written for a change. Uh, we take the reciprocal of the do plus the reciprocal of the di, and we get what for our focal length? Negative 10 point centimeters. Uh, letter E, Audrey. Is the lens converging or diverging? How will I tell that class? The focal length. If a negative focal length, even going back to the lens maker equation, tells me it's a diverging lens. And uh, the last thing they ask, what is the height of the image? So we want the h sub i. What would I need to use to find the height of the image, anyone? The magnification equation. We could have solved this first if we wanted to because we had the two other parts. We could say m equals h i over HO. Or again, the magnification class was, I'm going to put that over 1. The H I'm solving for, no negative, by the way, on this one. And then the H sub O was 0.8. And so we'll multiply and we will get 0 0.40 centimeters. What do we notice about the image? Positive, of course, right? So upright. What else? Compare it to the object. It's half as big. It's smaller. It's reduced. It didn't ask for whether it was reduced or not. Though, again, we could have answered that right off the bat. 
The absolute value of the magnification was less than one. We could have said reduce with our first answer. They just happened to never ask for that little fact. Questions on this example problem? All right, turn over in your books to page 308 now. Page 308. And look at problem number 13. And it says to draw principal rays. We aren't going to draw principal rays. We're going to use the math for this. But we could, I suppose, draw principal rays and do all that. We, just, we don't want to. Lazy. Good. All right, go ahead and read number 13 for us, if you would, Kendall. All right, what do we need to write down here, uh, Kendall? That's a very small uh, uh, focal length. It's a very strong lens, right? Um, real quick, if we wanted to find how powerful the lens was, remember, we need to change that to yeah. meters, which would be what? 0 0.04 and take the reciprocal. How powerful would that lens be? 25, what's the unit for power? Diopters, 25 diopters, very powerful lens here. A very small focal length. All right, uh, next number we need to write down. Um, the height of the object is 1.5 centimeters. So about the piece of my chalk. <laughs> All right, then? Um, the distance of the object is 5 centimeters. All right, so it's five centimeters away. Now, again, if we wanted to think through the ray diagram, we won't draw it, but let's think through it. The focal length is four centimeters. The object is just one centimeter behind that focal point. So what should we expect? It's not, if it were at the focal point, what would be true? No image. Really close to the focal point, but still behind it, class, Really big, real inverted, and very much enlarged is what we're expecting to see here. All right, um, and it says to find the position and size of the image. Well, position class means d sub i, and size of the image, of course, would be h sub i, the height of the image. All right, what equation do we want to use first? The well, thin lens equation, 1 over f equals the 1 over do plus 1 over di. How far away is the image? 20 point centimeters away. And when you remember, as the images got bigger, we had to move that projector screen a little further and further away. It's 20 centimeters away. The object's only 5 centimeters away. The image is 20 centimeters away on the opposite side. Um, and then for the h sub i, and this is one reason we're not drawing it, because that's between the do and the di, that's almost a full foot. Your paper isn't that wide. Okay, so it'd be really impractical to try to draw. Uh, but the h sub i, um, how would I find that? Right, negative d sub i over d sub i. Right, remember, we could make the proportion. We don't know the magnification, but you don't actually need the magnification. You could just put the other two parts together as a proportion and say that h sub i over 1.5 equals negative, don't lose the negative, 20 over 5. And I'm going to include the, the negative with the 20 here. We'll cross multiply negative 20 times the 1.5, then divide by the 5. How big will the image be? Negative 6.0 centimeters. So my little piece of chalk that's this big, when you look at the image, would be about that big. So it would be a very much enlarged image. Um, so enlarged, it's inverted, it's real, all those things. If we wanted to find the magnification, I would just look right here. What would the magnification be if it had asked? Mm -hmm. Negative 4, that ratio there. Uh, questions on that? All right, number 14. And read that for us now. 
Let's see whose turn is it. Michael. An object two centimeters size is located ten centimeters in front of a diverging lens whose focal length is negative six centimeters. Find the position and size of the image by drawing the principal ray. And again, we're not going to use the uh, the principal rays here. We'll do the map at your seat. Take a few moments to work, and then we'll go over it together. Number fourteen, but with map, not ray diagrams. image distance, negative 3.8 centimeters, and it, it's sneaky because they gave us three sig figs here, but then they gave us two in the other spots, so did have to round to the two sig figs, and then uh, for the height of the image, and I say the h sub i over h sub o equals negative d sub i, I'm not going to use the rounded value, don't use the negative 3.8, use the negative 3.75 over the d sub o, I'll allow the two negatives class to cancel. So it's really just going to be the uh, 3.75 times 2, and then divide the 10 out, and what do we get for the image's height? 0. 0.75 centimeters. So it's 2 centimeters tall, the object, the image is just 3 fourths of a centimeter tall. Uh, we see the negative image distance, that tells us? Virtual. Uh, we see a positive image height. And if you compare the image to the object, the image has been reduced. It's been shorter, right? So we have a reduced. Though, we could have said all three of those things from the one word in the statement, diverging lens, because that's the only thing diverging lenses do. Questions on the math. Again, very similar to chapter 19 math. All right, homework for this evening is to do page 308. Page 308, problems 15 and 17. Page 308, problems 15 and 17. We'll take a look at that in our next lesson. All right, have a wonderful rest of your day.